The Appalachian wasteland of Fallout 76 offers fans of the series arguably the most fright-laden experience they've ever seen. From eldritch subterranean monstrosities to elaborate genre easter eggs, it's weird out there on the post-war frontier. Strange things are afoot in the lowest depths of the Lucky Hole Mine, and it's not just the alarming mass grave. Any survivor curious enough to trek all the way to the depths will find the monster of a distinctly Cthulhu-esque nature buried in the depths of the earth. You'll find it in the deepest depths of the mine after venturing through notes about mysterious scavengers and increasingly unsettling shrines, built from bones to honor… something. The deeper you go, the more disturbing the cult activity gets, with strange church-like setups where they definitely shouldn't be. Even worse are the notes about a mysterious hymn, spawned from the forest and worshipped by these underground cultists. Who or what precisely is this first born of the wood? And is there a connection to the Lovecraftian Dunwich Borers location? in Fallout 4? Whatever the misshapen, tentacled monstrosity beneath Lucky Hole really is remains to be fully defined, as are the buried monoliths surrounding it. But as we string together clues from all corners of the Appalachian wasteland, the mysterious mine stands out as one of Fallout 76's best sources of unnameable terror. The first born of the wood creature beneath Lucky Hole Mine is only one part of a grand narrative scattered across the Appalachian wasteland involving a mysterious cult. The clues to this mystery can be found in scenes in desecrated churches, poisoned communions, and the blasphemous shrines made of wood and bone that are hard to ignore as you explore these desolate and unholy locations. The most unsettling signs of these cultists, however, are the clothes they use for their sinister purposes, the ritual mask and ritual bindings. Crafted from human bones, a beast and antlers and annulled roots, the ritual set is arguably the most intimidating outfit in Fallout 76. It doesn't get much creepier than an abandoned insane asylum. Fort Defiance, formerly known as the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, is a location in Fallout 76 that historians and horror fans alike are particularly fond of. You'll find this crumbling edifice on the edge of Cranberry Bog and the Savage Divide. And while Fort Defiance, as we come to know it, is native to Bethesda's fictional tale of Appalachia, the real-world Allegheny Asylum is considered to be one of the most haunted places in American history. According to Atlas Obscura, this spooky area sitting on 666 acres, quote, stands as a testimony to the inhumane practices once used in mental health. And yes, we said 666 acres. Sometimes reality is even less subtle than video games. Cannibalism is a pretty frequent subject in the more disturbing corners of the Fallout universe, creeping in as one of the more horrific aspects of post-apocalyptic society. In some games, you could even snack on corpses yourself thanks to the cannibalism perk, which makes a return in Fallout 76. That's just the tip of the flesh-eating iceberg, though, as Bethesda has apparently decided to lead into the whole thing where you chow down on your fellow humans, and ghouls and super mutants too. It can be pretty hilarious to see a bunch of players stop in the middle of a battle for a quick bite of their enemies, but don't let the good times distract you from what's going on behind the scenes. A jaunt through Vault Tech University is all it takes to find out what the wasteland really thinks of the cannibal life. The survival through cannibalism entry on the class syllabus, Vault Health and Wellbeing Terminal, reveals a truly unsettling but unshockingly believable stance on having your neighbors over for dinner in a very literal way. Not only has Vault Tech authorized its overseers to pursue cannibalism if they need to, they wound up teaching a whole class on the subject, with the syllabus promising instructions for how to make delicious side dishes using only hair and toenails. Thanks, but we'll just take our chances with whatever this stuff is. Whether we're talking serial killers or Stephen King stories, clowns are, scientifically speaking, the stuff of nightmares. So it's no surprise that Fallout 76 has its own horrifying harlequin, the creepy clown called the Farshnarked Man. The long-nosed, big-eared, bug-eyed maniac known as Farshnacht Man only appears in Fallout 76 via his mask, which can be found in a variety of places, including the former insane asylum that's now Fort Defiance. But what is Farshnacht Day? According to the happy Farshnacht note, it's a traditional German holiday that translates as fast night, a time to eat the richest foods before a period of fasting. Considering the emphasis that this game places on cannibals, and the history of serial killers like Pikmin, the Fens Phantom, and the pint-sized slasher that we've seen before in the series, it's not that difficult to figure out what the Farshnarked man's preferred meal is. Here's a hint, it's you. 
The legend of the Wendigo dates back to traditional Algonquin beliefs that often deal with murder and cannibalism, and has appeared in everything from scary children's stories to Marvel Comics. Now, they're in Fallout 76, and it turns out they're no less terrifying in the game than their folklore counterparts. Long before you actually see one in the game, you might already be on guard thanks to a description on Fallout 76's load screens, describing them as terrifying creatures with alarming speed, razor-sharp claws, and an insatiable hunger for raw flesh. When you finally encounter them throughout the Cranberry Bog, the Ash Heap, the Savage Divide, and the Mire, they definitely live up to the horrifying hype. Between their emaciated limbs and hungry maws, Wendigos might resemble ghouls or scorched from a distance, but a close encounter with these creepy, mutated cannibals reveals them as the lethal creatures of nightmares that they really are. Located east of Hunter's Ridge in Appalachia's forest region, the Alpine River cabins appear relatively normal at first. Take a longer look, however, and a brief investigation of the area reveals one of Fallout 76's most intriguing mysteries, and leaves us with a creepy riddle that remains unanswered. As you approach the location, the ground itself rumbles in anticipation of some unseen horror, just as a series of loud, howling screams begin echoing from a distance. After an onslaught of feral ghouls, you can examine the cabin interiors, and that's where things get weird. A hollow tape labeled Alpine River Cabin's complaint recounts one guest's ire in detail. The constant shaking in the cabins, rodent swarms, and blood curdling screams. Well, I'm more stressed than I was before. While the cabin's guest book includes a few visitors who had pleasant, quiet experiences, it seems that more than a few of them encountered something spooky going on in the woods of Appalachia, including you. Whatever's behind the happenings at Alpine River Cabins, we're pretty sure it's downright unnatural. Or at least it seems like it is, until you find a computer that's controlling all the so-called hauntings. That still raises the question, though. Why fake a haunting in a nuclear wasteland? What secrets are the Alpine River Cabins hiding? The world of Fallout 76 is a spooky one. It's only fitting then for the team at Bethesda to have drawn on some equally spooky pop culture influences for their requisite stash of easter eggs. One particularly creepy allusion is an overt nod to the Overlook Hotel, the lavishly haunted locale featured in Stanley Kubrick's film adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining. The Torrance House, named after the movie's doomed Torrance family, is located south of Nougat near Bleeding Kate's Grindhouse, and features a handful of direct references to Kubrick's horror classic. The Torrance House isn't the same size as the Overlook, but the telltale features are all there, including evidence of refurbishment, Danny's tricycle, a scattering of blocks that spell Red Rum, a hedge maze in the backyard complete with an axe-wielding corpse, and more. The location isn't very notable for its poultry loot or its lurking protector and enemies, but it does a great job of conjuring those Stephen King vibes. It's totally wishful thinking, but if you turn down the Appalachia radio, you can almost hear the Grady twins above the din of the wasteland, inviting you to to come and play Fallout 76 with us forever and ever and ever. The West Virginia of Fallout 76 takes full advantage of real-world Appalachia's ample resources of historic locations and intriguing folklore. Beautiful forests, deep, dark coal mines, and of course, the wonderfully unnatural Snallygaster. Originally hailing from Maryland, the hoax of this monstrous cryptid was perpetuated by a local newspaper. According to the Middletown Valley Register, President Theodore Roosevelt himself was actually considering postponing his highly publicized African safari to stalk the mysterious local specimen after rumors of a blood-drinking monster surfaced in 1909. The story set off a flurry of reports of sensational encounters with the beast, christened the Snallygaster. This Snallygaster has got a hell of a screech to it. It weighs 800 pounds. Hell, it can grab up two coyotes at once. The Snallygaster of Fallout 76 is a horrible six-limbed cocktail of different species and can be found lurking near dangerous areas, spitting toxic venom, pouncing at you ferociously upon its hind limbs, or gnashing at you with its several rows of grotesque humanoid teeth. It might not be as fast as a Wendigo or as powerful as a Deathclaw, but the Snallygaster is a horrible sight to behold and is absolutely in the running for the most hideous enemy in Fallout history. From Wendigos to the Grafton Monster, almost all of the strange new creatures in Fallout 76 are drawn from real-life myths and legends, so it's no surprise that Appalachia's most famous cryptid makes an appearance too. That said, even if you're expecting to see Point Pleasant's famous Mothman, first sighted back in 1966 and enshrined in West Virginian folklore ever since, its appearance can be pretty unsettling, and that's before you get to his extensive pre-war religious cult. This terrifying, wandering monster's arrival is heralded by strange 
strange chimes. Effigies left by cultists are scattered around the map, and often, this strange creature simply watches you as you go about the business of survival. Somehow, that's even creepier than getting rocks thrown at you by a headless gorilla. Given their overt cosmetic similarities to feral ghouls, one might presume that the Scorch to Fallout 76 originate from the same atomic apocalypse that marked the Great War. As you move through the game, though, you'll come to learn that the radioactive Scorched Plague is quite likely the result of pre-war mad science. In fact, hollow tapes recovered from the Arctis Pharma Animal Testing Lab suggest that the Scorched Plague was born from the adverse effects of a series of surreptitious lab trials. The plague's disturbing genesis can be found in an in-game test log that highlights the mutations from a formula that's been modified to be airborne. Back then, the scientists were hoping that the side effects of their experiments were limited to a skin condition. But by the time you find all of this out, you'll understand how wrong they were. The Scorched are the most dangerous, persistent threat in Appalachia, responsible for wiping out the few survivors of the war who are attempting to hold on against an unbeatable horde. The fact that they're a man-made catastrophe may not be surprising given the Fallout franchise's emphasis on horrors like apocalyptic nuclear wars, but that doesn't make it any less harrowing.